Hello, I am Luos, and in this tips and tricks video I'm just going to make some shapes with math. It's not going to be anything exciting, but it might give you some ideas on what to do with just math instead of importing a texture. Let's just start out with something like a uh, horizontal or vertical aligned bar. So let's grab a texture coordinate node, hold down the U key on the keyboard, left mouse click. And also get a component mask. I think if you hold down uh, Shift and C, you will automatically get one. Yes. And in this case, we're just going to go for the green channel. If you preview it, then you can see there's a nice gradient going on. Now I want to one minus that invert it, and that will give you an inverted version of that gradient. Now let's multiply the inverted one. With the not inverted one, uh, you'll get a nice gradient on both sides. There we go. Let's move it out to the left a little bit. Now I want to multiply this eventually with a higher value, maybe like five or so, but we'll see that. And now we need a floor. And if you hold down Ctrl and Alt over a node, you can actually see what it does. And the floor expression takes in values, rounds them down to the previous integer, and Integer and output your results. Also, see seal and frag. But now we're just going to use the floor and preview that one. And there's not much you can see until you increase that multiply. Now you can see that nice horizontal bar. If you do bigger values, then you'll get some additional things, but five seems to work nice in this case. Now, let's say you want a vertical bar. You can do almost the same thing. I'm just going to copy it, click somewhere, then paste it. And instead of the green channel, we're going to make this the red channel. Now, if we preview this, then you can see that you have this nice vertical bar. Now, let's go a bit further. Let's say we add the horizontal and vertical bar. Again, previewing. And you can see this nice cross section, but we don't really want those sides anymore. So let's multiply this with a negative well less than whole value like 0 5 and then why not floor it again we might be able to remove the other floors we can try and see what happens then but now we have a nice square going on let's try removing the other floors to see what the result does there and i think it should be about the same actually no not at all there we have a nice circle so keep that in mind and we can easily just copy and paste this section and Add the floors back to this one and you have a square version and a spherical version and that's actually quite cool now another way to get a somewhat spherical version is actually to just add the output of these multiplies over here there we go um, preview that for a second and as you can see it's a bit of a mess with just the edges cut off a little bit now let's say we multiply that with a higher value, um, something like 3 perhaps. Now it doesn't look like much difference, but once you add that floor again, there we go, and preview that, you also have a nice circle. Now there are other ways to get a round gradient. For instance, you can get the spherical gradient 2D. There we go. And if you preview just this, then you can see that it actually has some nice, slightly blended off edges. And you can change that with some of the settings in here. You can also offset it, like um, let's grab a V2. If you hold down the 2 on the keyboard, left mouse click, you'll get this. And you change the center position, you can actually do some quite some fun things with it. Let's say ODA5 brings that to the horizontal middle and ODA5 in the G channel. It actually brings it back to the center. Now, let's play around with this real quick just for something fun. Uh, let's say for this value, uh, we copy and paste it a few times. Now, this is not the best way to do it, but I'm just playing around. And that's something that you should probably want to do as well. Because the more you play around with nodes, the more you learn about them as well. Okay, we have this one that's in the left corner. Let's make one that's in the right corner. Uh, for that, we need to change the R value to 1. We're going to do the same with this one, but in the green channel. Actually, 
yeah there and for the last one we're gonna put a value of one and one in both now let's say we multiply those uh, in the result of this one and if you preview it you can see the same thing and multiply that with this actually now we need to add something sorry about that I always mess up add and multiply and you preview that now you have this nice thing going on and we're gonna also grab an, another add for these two and just hold down the A key left mouse click and there you have it and let's preview that now let's add those two as well and this is the result now let's invert that with the one minus hold down the O key left mouse click and preview that and you get something like this now you can still floor this and preview it and you have this nice spark thing now additionally you could do some other things instead of floor you could lower the multiply and get some other results but i'll show it that later with another thing so keep that in mind when you're playing around with shapes it's actually quite cool to do something like that now there's also something that's actually quite fun and mm, let's see what could we do let's go back to the horizontal and vertical bar and the spherical things that we can make of, of it and let's just multiply this value together so this is basically the vertical and the horizontal one multiply those together and you get this weird blocky-ish shape and we want to multiply that with a high value i'm just i think 30 will do maybe a bit lower and uh, let's floor that again there we go and preview that and we have this semi-rounded square that's actually quite nice you can change it a little bit by lowering the value i guess so if 20 is smaller uh, 30 is getting bigger until you get hit that point where you'll probably need some additional math to smooth that out but 25 30 that works as well now um i think it's going to be one of the last things i'm going to show you and that's going to be a very bright dot now normally we tend to use emissive for this but sometimes you don't really want that and i'm going to show you a result for that let's grab a texture coordinate node again hold down the u key left mouse click and get a distance <coughs> node if i can find it distance cool fade yeah, yeah, yeah where's the normal distance where are you there you go go and if you preview this there's not much to be said because there's an error and uh, but let's add another value i think a scalar will work but i'm not entirely sure and just turn that to 0.5 you might need to actually this is fine now let's multiply that with a really high value um i'm guessing about 64. and let's preview that again and you have this very small black hole in here now we want to multiply that actually with itself and preview that and it's way too bright now but if we divide this hold down the d button and left mouse click i think yes and divide up by the value of one it does change it a little bit but i'm not actually sure actually let's try it like this no same result and now we need to add a very low value like minus o dot o o one and we can preview that here and now all of a sudden it's inverted you have this nice tiny little spot now let's saturate that just in case a saturate is basically just a clamp between zero and one and now you have this very nice right spot and that can actually be quite useful there's still some things you can play around with with the values you can change the multiply value to something higher and see if that gives you some nice results 32 and 64 again this gives you some nice bright spot and if you use that in a translucent material let's make it unlit and hook that up to the opacity 
and stop previewing for a second. You have this very tiny black hole. And now let's add a random color to it. Uh, let's say something a bit red, though not this amount of red. Just a regular red. And now you have this very bright red spot that isn't actually not uh, totally uh, whited out because of the way the tone mapper works nowadays. So let's say you multiply this value by something really high. You'll get something like this. And that's actually quite cool. Now there are multiple ways you can do it. You could actually also maybe perhaps try different shapes. You might even get away with trying to combine this in front of some of these. We can try it. I'm not sure if there's going to be any proper results, but for funsies, before I show one last thing, let's try that. Now, normally this is the floor. Let's say we add all this in front of this texture coordinate node over here all the way to the mask. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but as you can see, we now actually have a nice tiny ring. We might be able to change those values again by 32, maybe 16, 8. As you can see, we now have a nice ring going on. So there's a lot of things you can do with math, even without understanding math that much. I mean, I totally, totally suck at math. But once you get a bit of a hang of it with notes, do what? You can come up with quite interesting things. Actually, I did not expect this to be a ring. That's going to be totally honest. Now, we can add the floor here back. That doesn't matter too much. So there we go. We might be able to change the multiplier here by another value, but I'm guessing that won't really do anything at the moment. We might be able to preview it though, but that doesn't give that good a result either. So let's go with the floor in this case and have a nice ring. For some reason, it reminds me of one of the rings in the Pokemon games, but on the one that's on the bear. But for one last thing before we call this quits, let's do something fun. Let's say you want to use this bright spot thing more often, and you don't feel like copying this from another material all the time or recreating it over and over again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually select this and just hold Control and C to copy it. Go back to the content folder. I'm going to save it first real quick. Right mouse click, go to materials and textures and grab a material function. I'm going to call this uh, material function bright spot and double click on it. And I'm just going to paste what I made before, control V. And there we go, just going to connect it to the output. We're going to name this bright spot output for now. It's fine and we don't really need to tweak anything we can change the distance the multiplier and as you can see before the multiplier is maybe the most interesting thing so let's give that a input so we can tweak that constantly so right mouse click input function input and since it's only a scalar value we need to change this value to a scalar and we can call this in and we're just going to call it multiplier for now you can name it whatever you want you can also edit it description uh, size of the bright spot might work and we need a preview value now 64 is the preview value there so let's just pick that and we can use this preview value as default and if you enable this then you won't need to put in a value if you don't want to once it's a material function we're going to plug that in here and that should be it we're going to save it for now so we can actually see what's going on going to go to this material again and just drag and drop that bright spot material function and as you can see the result is the same as with the saturate over here and the advantage is that I can now you just use a scalar or a parameter if you hold down S and left mouse click you can actually get a parameter version of the scalar so let's just call it uh, bright spot size and hook that in and zero is way too high, of course, but let's do the 64 again so we can actually see what's going on. 64, the 128, the 32. So this might be your first material function. Now let's say you want actually to have it show up in this palette over here, which is very huge. Let's go back to the material function bright spot, click somewhere, and then you can add the description. 
uh, adds a bright spot is a nice description and if you expose it to the library then it will actually show up in the palette over here now we can also make sure that there's a category normally it's in misc so if i go all the way down to misc we'll find it but let's say you want a special one for uh, vfx or whatever you can just enter that over here save it and now if you go all the way to wherever vfx is in this massive list probably somewhere down here because it is on alphabetical order you should slowly find the vfx one there we go and it's not there yet actually that's somewhat odd because normally it should be there now maybe if i load the material again that's just some one of those things i guess i'm gonna save real quick you should have the material for uh, set up it's vfx exposed to the library you're gonna save it one more time just in case and open that material again and go all the way to the bottom and there we have it the material function bright spot now we can click and drag it and we have one more so there's that you, now you know how to make some weird nice shapes without using a texture and you might have learned how to make your first material function all right that's it take care and have a nice day luos out